All right, I want to do a follow-up on where does the devil come from. Dev Cooper has a comment here. He says, the devil is closest to God. He's the only angel that didn't bow to God. Do you even know what Apollo or Satan looks like? Do you know what the Antichrist or Dajjal looks like? The Antichrist is the personification of Satan. Do you think God is a liar? Alright, okay, so first of all, I appreciate that comment. So let's sort of break this down a little bit here. Uh, the devil is closest to God. Alright, so I don't know what that means. Um, I guess if one way to look at it is if your uh, if you don't want to believe in the true God then the devil is the next closest thing I, I don't know I, I, you know obviously I, I don't agree with that at all I, I don't know what that even means compared to what the devil's closest to God who's further away from God than the devil now I'm, in the video, I make it very clear that the devil, Satan, the dragon, the serpent, is the absence of God. All right, Satan or the devil is void of God. All right, just as God is the light, the devil is dark. All right, now uh, the second one here. He's the only angel that didn't bow to God. All right, so you know, I can't, I can't agree with that. Now I guess, and first of all, it's important to understand that angels are spirits. They're not actual beings. And so the, this is what I'm really, the point that I'm really driving home is that there's not a creature out there or a being, you know, roaming around that, you know, is a flesh and blood creature. Uh, the devil, Satan, dragon, serpent, they're all spirits. Angels are spirits. All right, they're not actually, you know, creatures. But in Revelation 12, verse 9 we see that the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceives the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him his angels the devil's angels cast out with him so to say that he's the only angel that didn't bow to God I can't go along with that I'm, I'm not sure where you're getting that at all right, because neither one of these first two comments here are supported by Scripture. Do you even know what Apollo or Satan looks like? Well, again, Satan is a spirit. It's not something you can draw a picture of. I mean, you can draw a picture based on your imagination, but you can't take a camera and take a picture of Satan. All right? Now Apollo, yeah, I'm not again. I'm not sure. Let me see here, Apollo. So Apollo is this gentleman spoken of. I thought an axe. Uh, a certain name, a certain Jew named Apollos. Okay, Apollos with an S. So, there's no just Apollo in the Bible anywhere. All right, so, you know, as touching our brother Apollos, yeah, I'm not sure how you're getting, I'm not sure where you're getting that question from. All right. Not sure where that's coming from, unless you know. I can guess you're talking about Revelation nine verse 
11. Hebrew in the Hebrew tongue is a baden, in the Greek tongue is Apollyon, and we're speaking English. And all this is talking about in Revelation 9 is the wrath of God, which we really don't have anything to be worried about. And when you know this, when all this is happening. Um, this is when we're up in the air with the Lord and the wrath of God is being poured out upon the earth, all right? Uh, this is going to be trouble for all those who are not saved. And the thing that I really gather the most um, out of this uh, in, you know, chapter, in Revelation 9 here, is that even though all this is going on, they still do not repent of their evilness, right? In other words, they still won't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think, you know, we can go to, uh, what is that verse where, <clears throat> in the belly of Abraham, where there's Lazarus, uh, let's do it that way. And let's see if I can find is it Luke 16 it's got to be right no let's go to the very bottom here and he said unto him if they hear not Moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead right so if they're not going to hear Moses and the prophets now it's not going to do any good to bring up dead people to preach to them, right? And, I mean, they're just not going to believe because they, they've got everything they need right now to believe and they still won't, will not believe. So also, when the wrath of God is being poured out upon the earth, they're still not going to believe, right? It just doesn't matter with these guys, the unsaved. All right, now, let's see here. And just say, do I know what Apollo or Satan looks like? I, you're talking about spirits, man. All right, do you know what the Antichrist or Tajal, Dajal, or whatever that word is, um, look like? Well, I know what the Antichrist looks like. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, Let's find a picture of the Antichrist. Alright, there he is. There's, well that's the old Antichrist. Or is that the same one? I can't tell. No, that's the same guy, isn't it? I don't remember. I can't tell one from another. But that's, there he is, the Antichrist. Now, Dajjal is a an Islamic term. So if you're a Christian, a Bible believing Christian, why are you using Islamic terms? I don't understand that. There's no relevance to, you know, in the uh, Islam religion, no relevance other than they reject the Lord Jesus Christ and the Bible warns us of liars okay the antichrist is the personification of satan well i don't i'm not really sure what you mean by that either now the bible's very clear that the antichrist gets his power from you know, let's do it this way he gets his power from the dragon all right and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. All right, and the beast is the Antichrist. All right, the beast spoken of in the book of Revelation is the fourth beast of Daniel. And the fourth beast is the fourth king in his kingdom, which will be upon the earth, which is now. And then the end of the world comes. You know, and that's when, when the end of the world comes is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up 
in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet till I make thine enemies thy footstool right just like what God said to the serpent in the Garden of Eden I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel right till I make thine enemies thy footstool so uh, you know the beast is the Antichrist which is the Pope the Pope is the Antichrist who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God again speaking of the beast of Revelation which is the king and his kingdom and uh, he, you know, this, <laughs> he's the one, right? And the, the reason why uh, the beast is called the great whore, and you know, is because it's a church. It's a false church. It's a, it's not the true wife. It's not the true bride. It's, it's the false bride, the false wife. You know, just you think of a married man who steps out on his wife and goes and picks up a prostitute or a hooker well this hooker will perform the duties of a wife but she is not the wife right? and so also the great whore is not the wife she's per performing duties as if she was the wife but she's not right? and this is clearly speaking of the Catholic Church and uh, verse 10 here, Revelation 17, verse 10. Seven kings, five have fallen. One is, and the other is yet to come. This is speaking of a succession of popes, exactly as w what we see here. The beast that was, and is not, and yet is, is the transformation of the Roman Empire from a physical empire into a spiritual empire. Again, that's why she's called the woman or the mother of harlots you know the great whore right anyways okay let's go back and uh, do what <clears throat> excuse me do I think God is a liar no not at all no this but I got I have when you ask that question I have to wonder where you, who's your God and where are you getting your information from uh, show me in the Bible all right don't show me from the Muslims. Don't show me from the Quran. Don't show me from the Book of Jews. All right, um, or whatever. I, you know, I don't know where you're getting your information from. I might be able to guess, but it, you're not getting it from the Bible. And if you are getting it from the Bible, show it to me. And boy, oh boy, I'd love to be corrected on this. You know, I want to know the truth. And that's why I put the Bible before any man. Look, I, I know what's going on out there. I, I know that there are people on the radio who ke keep talking about this coming Antichrist that's going to take over the world. I, I understand it. I see it. Every day we're being attacked. And uh, the deception is growing. <laughs> it's only getting greater uh, but I'm here to tell you they you know you're looking for an Antichrist to come well he's already here okay and so when men speak of a Antichrist that is coming in the future what these men are really saying is that Jesus is the Antichrist I don't see any other way to, around it. You know, what we call the Christ, Lord, and Savior, they call the Antichrist. I, I kind of feel like I could talk about this all day. So let's go to Daniel 9 and do a little test. When you see Messiah, uh, who's your Messiah? Is, is that the Antichrist? When you look at that, are you imagining the Antichrist 
Alright, who's going to confirm a covenant with one, or with many for one week, in one week? Right? Who's going to do that? Because uh, regardless of what you say, that's talking about the Messiah. This whole thing. Speaking about the Messiah. So, when it comes to confirming the covenant with many for one week, who who's doing that? Is it the Antichrist? If you say it's the Antichrist, then you are saying that Jesus is the Antichrist. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Now who did that? Jesus or the Antichrist? If you say the Antichrist, then again you're saying Jesus is the Antichrist. Because right, he put an end to sacrifices and oblations. All right, and for the overspreading of abominations, he made it desolate. All right, until the time of consummation, when is when he comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, that's the consummation. So, uh, again, I appreciate the comment. Uh, if you want to continue this conversation, I, I certainly welcome it. But uh, now I know God's not lying. And the Bible that I hold in my hand is the Word of God, from God. These are the words of God. All right, the people on the radio, the people, the people on the movie screens, that's not God. The Bible that I hold in my hand, that is the Word of God, from God. So, no, I don't believe God is lying. I know God's not lying. I don't even have to think about it. I know, absolutely, without any doubt, God is not lying. I believe every word of God. Every word is pure. Every word of God is pure. The words of the Lord are pure words. Thy word is very pure pure right every word god is pure he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him all right good day